Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So a new study has looked into specific blood biomarkers and how they can predict your chances of getting to be 100 years of age. Enough waffling off me. Let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this new study has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Anna Dragawaskaway. She hails from the University of Virginia. In it, she covers a 35-year study that was published in Springer Link, which investigated specific biomarkers that heightened the possibility of becoming a centenarian. And there are links in the description below to the studies and to the articles I used to put this presentation together. Now, previous research has found that people who become centenarians have fewer disabilities, comorbidities, and hospitalizations earlier in life. They are also characterized by better cognitive functions than people who will not reach their 100th birthday. Since health seems to correlate with becoming a centenarian, these researchers asked whether a simple blood test can predict a person's chance of reaching their 100th birthday. They conducted the biggest study to date that compares biomarker profiles, which were measured at similar ages earlier in life in centenarians and also in non-centenarians. Let's take a look at the cohort. The study population consisted of 44,636 individuals from Stockholm County who underwent clinical laboratory testing between 1985 and 1996. And the participants were followed up until the end of the year 2020. Now the researchers focused specifically on people born between 1893 and 1920. Those were people who were between the age of 64 and 99 when their first blood sample was taken for measurement. This enabled researchers to follow up with the study participants until they reached the age of 100. 2.7%, 2 that's 1,224 of the participants reached their 100th birthday which is representative of the Stockholm general population for this particular time period. So the researchers analyzed 12 blood-based biomarkers, and they were involved in inflammatory, which is uric acid, metabolic, so total cholesterol and glucose, liver, which is the liver enzymes and proteins, and kidney functions, which is creatinine. There were also biomarkers tests related to malnutrition, which is albumin, and anemia, so that covered iron and iron binding capacity. The authors then compared the distribution of biomarker values between people who did and did not end up becoming centenarians. They then studied the association between each biomarker and the possibility of becoming a centenarian. They found that except for two biomarkers, and that was the liver enzyme ALAT and albumin, all the measured biomarkers were associated with the likelihood of becoming a centenarian. So this is interesting. The likelihood of becoming a centenarian was higher for people who displayed increased levels of total cholesterol and iron. However, for glucose, creatinine, uric acid, liver enzymes and total iron binding capacity, it was the opposite. Lower levels of these biomarkers were correlated with a higher chance of becoming a centenarian. This is also interesting. The researchers also noted that the levels of the liver enzymes ALP and LD in most of the participants, whether they were future centenarians or not, were outside of the range now considered normal according to clinical guidelines. The researchers believe that since clinical guidelines are created generally for younger, healthier populations, they may not always be adequate for the elderly. This observation is even more interesting when the researchers observed that higher total cholesterol levels were correlated with an increased chance of becoming a centenarian. This obviously goes against the current clinical guidelines. The group that lived to become centenarians was on average older when the first blood measurement was taken. Their mean age was 79.6 years, while for the non-centenarians, the mean age was 76.7 years. Despite that, people who lived to their 100th birthday had a lower prevalence of morbidities at the time of the first blood measurement. The researchers also observed that centenarians had smaller differences in biomarker differences between the first and the second measurement when compared to the non-centenarians. In the centenarian group, 
biomarker profiles were rather homogenous. However, the analysis did identify two specific profiles within the centenarian population. The researchers named them high nutrition and lower but enough nutrition. The higher nutrition profile had more similarities to the non-centenarian profiles. The differences between the groups were not really significant, except for the total iron binding capacity, total cholesterol and albumin. And these are all markers of inflammation and also nutrition status. Now, liver function and anemia can also impact the values. The researchers speculated that total iron binding capacity, total cholesterol and albumin within the centenarian population might reflect nutrition, but not inflammation as the other markers of inflammation, such as liver function and anemia, didn't show any differences within the centenarian population. On the other hand, since the authors of the study observed differences between centenarians and non-centenarians regarding a marker of inflammation, that being uric acid levels, they speculate that it is inflammation or both inflammation and nutrition that can play an essential role in deciding who makes it to their 100th birthday. The research shows that from the age of 65 onwards, people who would eventually become centenarians show a distinct difference in their blood biomarkers. The researchers noted that their results regarding liver and kidney function and inflammation as a predictor of longevity are all in agreement with previous research. The researchers also hypothesized that alcohol consumption might play a role in exceptional longevity. The hypothesis is based on their observation that several biomarkers that are higher in non-centenarians are also alcohol related. However, they leave this topic for future research and future researchers. The authors point out that one limitation of the study was the lack of access to all of the biomarkers that they wanted to test. And this included the ones related to immunity and also inflammation. Also lifestyle information, such as smoking, alcohol consumption, and also physical activity levels. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. If you follow the channel, you know I get my blood test taken, or I get my blood tested every three months. Um, my total cholesterol is always high, which according to this study is a good thing. Iron should be between 50 and 212. Mine has only ever been over 100 once, so it needs to be up according to this study. So I may look into taking some kind of iron supplement. If anyone's got any ideas of good iron supplements to take, then please leave links in the description below. Um, but glucose, creatine, uric acid, liver enzymes, and total iron binding capacity should be lower. I'm guessing lower, but not out of range. So I don't get my liver enzymes tested, I don't think. Uh, my glucose, thanks to metformin, is now lower. My uric acid is down because I'm not eating anywhere near as much salmon as I used to when I was in the Middle East. And my total iron binding capacity is always in range, but thankfully is always right at the bottom end. So I'd be interested to see what your comments are with regard to this latest study on blood tests and reaching your 100th birthday.